Well, what's up, YouTube? What's up, YouTube? What's up, YouTube? What's up, YouTube? I'm Rugly Juice Recipes. Welcome back to Tuesday Reviews Day. This is normally a live show, but uh, my circumstances have changed here a little bit, and at least for the for foreseeable future, probably for the next couple of months, this is going to be a pre-recorded show. But same premise, uh, you know, same random flavor reviewing, uh, same random recipe making. <clears throat> and the first thing that I like to do during this show is talk a little bit about what we got last week. So last week, uh, we got the infamous, for probably the wrong reasons, TFA Black Cherry. And uh, we used TFA Black Cherry to make a black cherry pie. Now, this flavor, hold on, let me taste this again. It's been a few days. Mm. So black cherry is, is not something that's for the faint of heart. You have to really, really, really like black cherry to dig. You have to really like cherry to dig black cherry uh, because it's dark. It's basey. It's almost kind of spicy. It's not your, you know, it's not your cherry Kool-Aid. It's not your cherry lollipop. Um, a lot of people taste cough syrup, uh, you know, when they try black cherries. But uh, me, I don't get cough syrup. I get a very sweet, dark, basey, kind of like cooked cherry taste. This this flavor is actually surprisingly, surprisingly sweet. Fun fact, TFA Black Cherry was on my very first flavor order when I first started making my own DIY e-liquid, and it, you know, I hated it at first. Um, you know, I used it in a few recipes, uh, not too much success, and I gotta say that I really, really like this recipe. It's a black cherry pie a la mode. And it turned out really, really, really nicely. Um, you get that, you get that, that dark, sweet, syrupy black cherry with, with a little bit of crust, and then like the vanilla ice cream is just kind of melting over the warm pie. Somebody in the chat um, gave the recommendation to use to use Flavora apple filling to kind of fill in the gaps and make that black cherry a little bit more like pie filling. And it worked really, really well. This recipe, after a week's steep, I think it's fantastic. So, uh, you know, if black cherry is something that you really like, um, TFA black cherry is very, very good for. You know, when, when you taste a flavor, when you single flavor test a new flavor that you've never tried before, it's, it's really important to kind of sit back and ask yourself what this flavor is trying to do. My, my favorite part about it is that sweetness. Uh, you know, I was not expecting that flavor to be that sweet. So I, I you know, got to switch out my switch out my RDA here because that one will definitely need washed out. Otherwise, anything that I drip in there after that is just going to take like taste like black cherry. So uh, I think now it's time to head over to random.org and find out what flavor we are going to be playing with today. Same song and dance as always. All of my flavors are in this list. We're going to hit randomize three times. There's one. And here comes number two. There's two. One more time. The very first flavor that's listed after we hit this randomize button is going to be the one we're going to do. And it is S S a ripe coconut. You can see it right there. Fate has given us SSA ripe coconut. Yeah, that's right. SSA ripe coconut. So I always say that um, I've tried most of the flavors in my flavor stash, and uh, I try to do this. I try to do this as if I'd never tried it before fresh set of eyes looking at these flavors. Well, this week, uh, it's going to get a fresh set of eyes no matter what, because I have actually never tried this flavor before. I picked it up a while back. I'm still looking for a really, really good coconut flavor, but I have still not tried this flavor yet. So if SSA ripe coconut is like every other SSA flavor, 
Um, we're going to mix it up at 1%. So uh, the first thing that we do is single flavor test this flavor so that we can get an idea of what this flavor tastes like by itself before we decide what kind of recipe that we want to put it into. So I mixed it up here um, with a little bit of nicotine and 80-20 VGPG and didn't put any sweetener in there. We're going we're gonna to see. Every SSA flavor that I've tried before has been just fine at 1%. Uh, it's not quite as strong as I thought it was going to be, but it's very, very creamy and not not in an oily way. See, a lot of times uh, with coconuts, the cream, the sort of mouthfeel that they have comes off as oily. It doesn't come, doesn't come off as creamy. It comes off as oily. I'm not getting any of that kind of like suntan lotion kind of vibe from it, which I think is due in part to that oil that you get from a lot of coconuts. Not getting that here. This is, I'm not going to say that it's coconut milk, but it's very, very close to coconut milk. I think ripe coconut is actually a very, very good name for this flavor because it's, it's not toasty. It's not, uh, it's not cooked at all. Uh, it, it just, it just tastes like coconut. The flavor seems to be fine at 1%, but it's also very, very light. It's a very top note -y sort of coconut. So I think I want to try to push this flavor up. I'm going to do, I'm going to do one and a half percent and see what that does to the flavor. I'm wondering if this is, if this, maybe this is a coconut that I can actually push up and use it as a good top note uh, without turning it into suntan lotion, because that would be awesome. One and a half percent. I'm actually really, really surprised that that didn't turn into suntan lotion at all. Uh, it's not super oily. I'm thinking that I want to do, I think, I think that I want to do a beverage uh, with this coconut. So um, I'm thinking something with dairy, maybe, maybe like a tea. Maybe we do like a tea with, with ripe coconut. We need, we need, we'll need like a basey a very basey tea flavor. I don't really know of one that exists. Um, something that's not like super duper over flavored, still, still, still fairly like, still fairly like floral, but something that just kind of sits a little bit lower in the vape. So uh, I'm going to reach for Isai tea and I'm going to put one and a half percent of that in there with one and a half percent of the uh, SSA ripe coconut. And, and we'll see kind of, kind of if we get a, any separation between those notes um, I still want to be able to pick out the coconut in there. Um, I, I want that. I want that coconut to really be the star of the show. Man, that Isai tea is so good. The floral notes that are in the Isai tea pair really, really well with coconut. So now I think I want to get something in here, something like some. Something's like some berries. So strawberry, blueberry. Blueberry is pretty basey. Um, the basey, the strawberries that I know of that are basey are probably going to cover up that, that, that delicate coconut flavor. And that's not what I want to do. I need something that's real dark, real dark and sticky without, uh, without, oh, I know, boysenberry, Flavora boysenberry. You guys remember that time when we made uh, when we made root beer cheesecake? Yeah, that wasn't good. Mmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna do half a percent of Flavora boysenberry. Flavor is pretty pungent. I lost the top of my bottle. Yeah, coconut boysenberry acai tea.
This is going to be a really, really solid summer vape. Might need to add just a touch of citrus to it to, you know, just to kind of give it that snap, that pop. Boysenberry is pretty tight. Ooh. Wow. Man, Eastside tea is so good. And that boysenberry just kind of took it to a whole new level. Uh, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to add just a touch more of the boysenberry. We're going to go up 2.75%. And uh, it might be time to think about adding a little bit of sweetener to this. We're getting a nice, a nice full saturated flavor. I think it's about time we think about what sweetener we're going to put in here. So this is a, this is a creamy, top notey floral beverage. Mmm, boysenberry and Eastside tea pair up really, really nicely. I'm just gonna do a half a percent of Favora sweetness <clears throat> in this. Still thinking I might need to add just a touch of citrus in here, so maybe just a drop of Effie lemon. And uh, yeah, so we've built up this tea, uh, we've built up this, this uh, tart berry taste we might also need to kick up that cream notch a little bit, add an, add an actual dedicated cream to it, our dairy flavor. Yeah, Flavora Sweetness was a good call. Okay, so before I think about adding an actual cream to it, what I'm going to do is actually add another half of a percent of the ripe coconut because it has a really good a really good creamy mouthfeel. Why not just try to push that just a little bit and, and just add just, just a touch more of that coconut flavor um, with the ability to kind of add another half a percent of it to it after we tasted it at 1% and it didn't turn into lotion. I'm, I'm hoping that we can just add another half a percent of it and uh, it's, not, it's still not gonna turn into lotion. I hope, you know, we'll see what happens. We did get a little bit more of that of that really good creamy mouthfeel that's coming from that coconut. Uh, it's really coming through there, but I still I still feel like I still feel like I'm missing something in this. Uh, we have the we have the boysenberry. The Eastside tea is really coming through. That ripe coconut really just sits in the top. We almost kind of need something a little bit darker, even maybe. If we go too crazy with it, we're just going to cover up all of that delicate tea and coconut. I mean, the citrus might give it a little bit more separation in between the tea and the and the and the, and the creamy mouth feel or whatever. But I don't I don't think that that's what this needs. It needs something dark. I'm going to make it feel more full. That Eastside tea is like probably the basiest tea. You know, there's this ingredient that I don't feel like I've ever been able to use to much, much effect. And I'm really curious because it has almost these kind of like, I mean, they come off as chocolate, but I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Flavora Acai. It has these really dirty notes that I wonder if they'll work well with the Eastai tea. Like, like I said, they come off as chocolate almost. Like you can make this, you can use this to make a really good, like, um, chocolate covered blueberry, chocolate covered, chocolate covered berry. I don't think I've ever actually had like a real acai berry. So I don't really know what they taste like. I mean, I've had acai flavored things, but, uh, I put half a percent of Flavora acai in here. I'm really just curious. I've always wanted to do so much with this flavor, but it seemed to me like you couldn't really do much with it other than like bakeries or chocolates or anything because it has those has those dirty notes. 
And I wonder how, how well it pairs with the, with the boysenberry. Boysenberry acai, coconut boysenberry acai tea. Acai acai tea. <laughs> Didn't think that through, did I? That's really hard to say. Coconut boysenberry acai isai tea. No. Nope. Pretty interesting. I mean, you still get all of the notes and that, that dirty... That dirtiness, whatever whatever it is that is in the acai, I don't know if that's just the way that acai tastes or if it's supposed to have chocolate in it or something like that, but it, it works with the acai tea. Isai, acai, no. And that's good too, because it, it sits underneath everything else in the vape and it, it just kind of makes it feel more full. The berry flavor works well with the boysenberry and the isai. Mmm. Oh, man. That's really interesting. It's one of those things like, I don't know if this tastes good, but I can't stop vaping it. It does taste good. That's really cool. I didn't think that when I walked into this that I was going to effectively use acai for anything other than chocolate berries. Mm. And you still get that coconut. You still get that top top note coconut. Doing this makes me want to make an acai RY4 or an acai tobacco. Not isai, acai. It's two different things, guys. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Flavora Isai T here, Isai, and Flavora Asai. <laughs> That's not why we're here, though. Today, today, fate gave us SSA ripe coconuts. So, what do I think about SSA ripe coconuts after tasting it? Again, I had never tasted this flavor before we single flavor tested it at the beginning of this episode. What do I think? about SSA ripe coconut. Well, I think that the name is very, very good. It is a like fresh tasting, it's not fleshy. It's almost like coconut milk taste. Um, it doesn't have any of that weird, like oily suntan lotion-y kind of vibe. And it has a really pleasant dairy mouthfeel. So I feel like this is a coconut that you can kind of push and use as a top note without ruining your flavor profile which with a bunch of suntan lotion. So I will definitely be using SSA coconut again. Uh, we, we single flavor tested it at 1%, pushed it up to one and a half. And then in the mix, we used it at 2% and it still did not taste like sun tan lotion. I think it's a good coconut if you're looking for a fresh or creamy coconut taste. I think that about wraps up this episode of Tuesday Reviews Day. I appreciate everybody hanging out while we talked about S S A coconut. Listen, if you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn notifications on so that I get to annoy you every time I upload a video. Like, comment, and I will definitely see you guys in the next one.